So hey, what's up guys? Sorry I'm a little behind on getting this video up, but uh, you know, things in life happen. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Uh, to start with the scarf on Aileen, I uh, used Joe Sanjo, um, it's a, a purple color, and it doesn't cover that well. I, uh, experimenting with the paint, it, it's great for finishing, I think, and for making glazes. Um, it's because it's very hard to break that paint up. But I'll go ahead and we uh, base coat this with this kind of purple lavender color. So on the palette, I worked out some uh, highlight transitions, like a, a, a first and second highlights using pale blue gray and worked all the way up to that. And so this is a really experimental for me. Like I was, didn't really have a plan for the scarf. It just happened in the spur of the moment while I was painting. So I kind of dug the kind of violet vibe that I was getting and it'll come to play later uh, once we get to the hood. So here you can see it's kind of a hot mess. Um, there's not really, uh, really good transitions. So we're gonna go back to that base coat, thin it out and work between uh, the layers that we've already created. We're also gonna add in a, just a speck of black to give us some more of a shadow color. As you can see, I just pulled straight lines using that black and uh, pure or neat uh, pale blue gray, and that's how I did the stripes on the on the vest. Or sorry, that's how I did the stripes on the scarf. And then I knew I wanted to give her a red tunic, so I actually started out with the. Uh, we're just kind of using the um, the red set from Andrea straight out of the box. So you can see it's kind of this purplish red to start with, and we'll slowly build up to a more pure red.
So I want you to kind of realize, um, I've mentioned it before in previous videos, as you can see that I'm adding highlights, each area that I'm painting is getting it small, getting smaller and smaller. So with these folds that are really great, they kind of already create a triangle for you. So you're gonna work your way, you know, from your base coat to the edge with your, with your highlights. And each time that you add the next highlight, the area that you paint is gonna get smaller leaving the, the the previous coat behind. That way we're not covering up anything that we've already uh, laid down paint for. Okay, and you can see we just followed the protocol of the paint set and added in the shadows using the two shadow colors. So it's just a two-step process of a second and first shadows. You guys have seen me do lots of uh, uh, leather before, so I'm gonna skip over the leather bits, but I did wanna show that I'm creating this kind of purplish brown glaze uh, with inks that uh, I'm gonna run over the leather that I've kind of beat up a little bit to give it some some interest. Um, I really dig these inks. I'm using Liquitex uh, inks, and um, since then, since filming this, I've actually also picked up a lot of inks from Andrea and they really go a long way to, to punch up the saturation uh, on your miniatures. And as you can see, it gives us leather, like it has like a, a satin, almost kind of gloss finish, which you can tone down using, um, uh, 
using a matte varnish, mix it in there, or but that'll make it dry a little bit faster. Or you can use Reaper's Anti Shine, which I like to use. But once again, as I've said in the past, you really want to be um, kind of gingerly with the the Reaper stuff because it'll it'll uh, create a lot of buildup if you add too much to your paint. And most matte varnishes, like Vallejo's matte varnish, of course, I believe it makes your paint dry a little bit faster, so it's not as easy to continue to work. Now on her buttons, I did start out making them brown, but uh, I think it come back and I wasn't really satisfied with it. It didn't stick out enough. So we went with a uh, more of a, a golden yellow. So here I went ahead and started on the quiver. Um, it's a, a great little piece. I didn't even know that was uh, a part of the, the figure. When you see the box art, you don't really see the quiver. <coughs> You don't really see the quiver in the box art. So it was a nice little surprise to have it. I am showing you the leather on this one because I kind of do something a little bit different. Um, I'm still using ochres and things on the on the brown bits, but then I go for more like a, a khaki look on the uh, the lining of the, of the quiver. And then I also did some freehand stuff that was kind of just on the go. I went on Pinterest and looked up quivers and I saw a bunch of them had like embroidery and things like that, a lot of fantasy quivers. And so I like the idea of that, and I thought it suited this figure really well. So yeah, I just freehanded some uh, some embroidery on there. But it, you know, it's my—I'm not really a, a freehand painter, so uh, I think it came out pretty good. But uh, I don't think I actually filmed the process because I was kind of just going nutty with it and, and experimenting. So here I'm adding some ochre and some dark flesh. Leather is flesh in a sense, so you can always use flesh tones or colors that you would use for flesh tones to mix it in. You can see the paint's really thin, really wet, and I'm kind of just, once I put down the paint, I kind of feather it into the, the other bits of leather. It's another technique and a great way of blending besides just glazing over everything.
And of course we had some cuts and, and some breakage into the leather. And wherever you're gonna have a highlight like that, you're gonna have to have a shadow. So you'll see me add those as well. Um, I think it's really important to stress that. Wherever you have a highlight, wherever you have a shadow, you need to have, like, wherever you have a highlight, you need to have a shadow uh, punching out that highlight. As you can see, I'm adding black brown now, and I'll go through and I'll put uh, a darker uh, color right next to those highlights where I've added the cuts in the leather. Okay, here you can see me thinning out the inks. This is burnt sienna, and I'm gonna run this over uh, the, the quiver, and it's gonna give it that punch, that saturation that I was talking about earlier. Now, like I said, I didn't film the freehand or the khaki bits, but I did wanna make sure that I, I covered over the inks. It's a really, really cool tool to, uh, like I said, punch in some color and, and add some uh, oomph to the, to the item.
Now for the hood, I used base green from the Andrea Green set. I used uh, field gray number three from the field gray set. And then I mixed in a little brown uh, base from the uh, brown set to kind of desaturate those greens a little bit. That's also why I used that field gray. I didn't want the hood to be a like, crazy electric green. So my initial base coat is pretty desaturated. And this is something that uh, I've been playing with and I hope to cover in a video in the future. So once base coated, um, once again, I don't want to have an electric green. I kind of want to have like this um, kind of cool uh, forest green. And so I stepped up to the number four from the green set, and then I mixed in a little yellow number one from the yellow set. And so that's going to give us a little bit more of a uh, green yellow, of course. Uh, but it's also, I don't know, it kind of leveled out because usually if you add yellow to you know, it'll be green, but as you can see, I'm mixing in some brown back in there, a little bit of that field gray, and we're still keeping it desaturated enough, so we kind of keep this kind of forest green look to it. And then I'll pop in a little yellow, and that's gonna be our uh, highlight highlight. So as you can see, I've created like some kind of texture. I wanted to build upon that and continue to add that texture. And then we'll tone it in once we get to the shadows. But it was a really cool effect. And it's just kind of stippling along the edges of the highlights. And I, I think it came out pretty good. Um, so fairly useful technique. Um, just kind of writing the, the edges of, of everything and adding in details that aren't necessarily there or they're not as defined as the rest of the sculpt so you can use this technique to kind of pull out um, a little bit more of life as you can see I'm going along the edges and where those subtle folds are I'm pulling them out by adding that texture
Now, finally, for the the last move on the bust, I decided that, you know, I've been working with complementary colors pretty much the whole process, with a lot of purples, greens, reds, and yellows. So I decided to make a, a, my shadow coat with a lot of purple. I used the Citadel Drochi Violet, and also mix in just a touch of that Joe Senio that I used in the in on the scarf, just to, to thicken it up a little bit more. And I ran that through all the shadows. And I think it really worked. It's kind of cool. It makes the yellow pop. The shadows kind of came out really nice. And uh, everything kind of stands out. Even though it's a, a simple bust, um, she was a lot of fun and a great exercise, a great challenge. And uh, I just really enjoyed painting her up. It's a wonderful uh, figure from Nocturna Models. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll, I'll see you in the next video.